and your hand on for the night. Very funny dude, man. Come from Beaumont. Put your hands together. You already clapped Mr. Justin Thompson. Y'all let him in. Keep it going for all the comics that you've seen tonight. Give them another round of applause. How you going, Houston? How's it doing? Whatever. I'm white. All right. Um, <laughs> hi. Am I good? You good? Sweet. Hi, my name is Justin Thompson, and uh, I know it's kind of weird looking at me. I have kind of an odd look. Kind of look like if you made a Muppet maybe out of a 1970s crotch. Um, <laughs> I know it's a weird look. The first thing you notice about me is I have a big beard. Uh, Couple of things about beards that are stereotypes if you watch television. First of all, I'm not a lumberjack. <laughs> Second of all, I don't know how to customize any of your motorcycles. And third, I don't know how to make any you son of a bitch as a duck call. Um, <laughs> not one. I do use that last one to pick up chicks though if I go into country bars though. I'm like, yeah, I'm one of their cousins, baby. Quack, quack, get over here. <laughs> if I go to a hip hop bar, I cut tell everybody I'm Rick Ross's white cousin. Um, <laughs> And if I go to a gay bar, I'm what's known as a bear, which case, I finally get some free drinks. Uh, I've been waiting all my life to somebody to be attracted to all this, and it just happened to be effeminate white gay dudes. Um, lucky for me. Uh, the second thing you notice about me is that uh, I'm a bigger dude. Man. Uh, thanks, lady. Uh, <laughs> that was the rudest thing possible to say. Uh, <laughs> I am... I don't know, though, like, I noticed it whenever I went, uh, oh, I went overseas and I entertained the troops. And when you're over there, they give you a flat jacket, right? Uh, they give you a flat jacket, so just in case whenever you're flying around and you get shot at, you will be bulletproof. When they give you mine, they go, hey, this doesn't fit. And they go, that one's the biggest one we got. And I went, damn, I'm too fat to be bulletproof. <laughs> So I had to look at myself, I'm like, I don't have big arms, I don't have big legs, like I have absolutely no ass whatsoever. <laughs> like it's just back and thigh. It's my body area. In retrospect, I probably shouldn't call this my body area. Um, now that I think about it, <laughs> but I do. And every time I sleep on my stomach, I'm like a foot off the bed. <laughs> You know what it feels like to go to sleep at night and feel like you're constantly skydiving? <laughs> Only positive thing is I had that dream where I'm falling and I hit the ground, probably got to shoot. It's uh, not a good thing. I have been trying to date recently. Uh, I'm trying internet dating. Uh, I met a girl on blackpeoplemeet.com and, um, and she was Korean. Uh, so the site really works. Uh, she should have known that the date was going to be weird, because right in the middle of it, she started using weird analogies about her vagina. She goes, I just want you to know that I'm not an easy girl. Downstairs is like the Bourbon Mall. I'm like, you know that came down, right? <laughs> so she decided to switch up analogies, and she's like, well, then it's like the Great Wall. I'm like, now it can be seen from space. So she switched up the analogy again. She goes, well, then it's like Fort Knox. I went, the only person ever break into Fort Knox was a Bond villain who just happened to be named Goldfinger. She goes, I'm not going to win this, am I? I went, no, nah, you should probably stop. But I eventually did bank, break down her metaphorical wall um, and found out she was very kinky. Like, she liked to be tied up and spanked and that type of thing. Guys, if you have a woman who's into this, take advantage of it, because it's the only time you can get out frustration from your woman. <laughs> it's great. Because while you're going, oh, yeah, you talk that, you talk that, take it. What's really going through it is, why don't you ever just shut the hell up? <laughs> oh. I'm sorry, did that last one hurt? Well, Al wasn't our safety word, was it? We agreed on onomatopoeia. <laughs> There was a double standard with us sexually, which I thought was unfair. Like she was telling me all this stuff that she wanted one time we went to the sex shop. She's like, look, I want this, it's a bunny, and it does this, and I want this, it's a butterfly, and it does this, 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 this. like this whole wall of crap. I'm telling her I'm thinking about getting one thing there, and she goes, ooh, you're a pervert. And I go, wait a second, why did you, am I a pervert? She goes, the reason that women have to get these utensils is they cannot find a guy that can properly take care of their needs when we need them taken care of. I mean, you realize how much bull crap that is, right? Because it's you, you that decide when we have sex, okay? Because if I decide when, there's felony charges and crap. <laughs> it's not fair. 
She makes her watch. She makes me watch crappy TV. Whether anybody, any other guys watch crappy TV with your girls? She makes me watch a Mark Puffin show with her all the time. And I thought it was a good idea. I thought it was good to watch it with her because I thought some jokes would come out of it. But nah, it's just a lot of pain. Um, until one day, okay, and it made me mad though because the TV blanked off. It like something happened and the cable screwed up, and I was and, and normally I'd be like yes, but in this instance the show had me hooked. They brought in two people. They're like, this is Jessica and this is Rebecca. Uh, this is Jessica and this is Stephen. And they sit him down, and Jessica goes, "Me and my boyfriend Stephen have a Dr. Seuss fetish." And then boop, leaving me now there, not knowing what in the hell that could possibly. What in the hell is that? The Zelda boyfriend gets dressed up like a cat in a hat and then sex by wall saying, One fish, two fish, red fish, blue fish. <laughs> then we just lays down on the bed and goes, Come over here, baby, it's time to hop on pop. <laughs> Other things that are off limits in that in their sex life, with that stuff that weird. And do you say it like Dr. Seuss? Do you ever go, you're not sticking that thing one in my thing too? <laughs> Donald didn't get that joke, should read a book. I love how I say that like they're novels. Like Fox in the Sock spoke to my soul. Whole years of who changed my life. Green eggs and ham got me home for heroin. <laughs> I, uh, she asked me weird questions. Oh, I broke the stand. Oh, well, I'll fix it later. She asked me weird questions. Uh, the other night, she was, we were laying in bed, and she goes, do you have a name for your penis? And I was like, no, I don't have a name for my penis. Why would I have a name for my penis? She goes, my ex had a name for a penis. I went, is that a thing? She goes, apparently, all my boyfriends have had names for it. I was like, I did not know that that was a trend. How come I missed out on this? So I've been going throughout the country asking people their names for it. And I've come up with a couple of pretty funny ones. Um, this for, the other day I was doing a show and I asked the dude, I went, do you have a name for yours? He goes, My, its name is Lance. And I go, Lance, is that because it won the Tour de France seven times? <laughs> Another dude said his girlfriend named his, said she named it Commando. I was like, she probably named it Commando because she wished it was Arnold Schwarzenegger. Um, all dressed in camo, kind of a rescuer. Uh, my favorite one, though, was he said, my name is Chocolate Thunder. I was like, Chocolate Thunder sounds like that thing is a monster truck. I guess you'll be racing Grave Digger and crap. <laughs> That's awesome. I had a weird meeting with her the other day. Like, have you ever been dating somebody and you ran into each other in public? Like, just on chance? Like, uh, I was in a grocery store, all right, Walmart. Um, <laughs> And I ran into her, and uh, she had her daughter there. And I, I had never met her daughter before, and she was scared of me. Which I was, and I was like, oh, are you scared of me? And she goes, uh-huh. I go, is it the beard? She goes, uh-huh. I go, look, it's not bad, but you can feel it. And she felt it. And so she's like, that's not scary. I go, no, you can pull on it. And she pulled on it once. Fine, she pulled on it the second time. I was like, all right, that was a little hard. She yanked it the third time. And then what she did, without realizing it, I screamed and went, don't pull it so hard. You won't get to play with it next time. In the middle of Walmart, moms came out of nowhere. <laughs> I was expecting the IC to tackle me and take me to jail. Oh, <laughs> uh, man. But uh, I have um, been going through my attic the last couple days. I found my regular Nintendo the other day in my attic. That's sweet, right? Pulled it down, I started to play it. Started getting mad because I realized that oh, kids got it so easier playing video games now than I did. Because now game days, you play a video game, you can stop it at any point in that entire game and go back to it 20 years later. It'll be right at that point where you left off. Anybody remember having a Nintendo on for like eight days because you couldn't beat Mario? <laughs> your mom goes in your room, sees it's on, and turns it the hell off? It's the most soul-crushing day ever. It's like, oh my god! You have It's the first time in your life you actually go, get in, bitch! <laughs> Not to her face, you want to live. Um, but it is. That's if you ever got it to work to begin with. You guys had to blow in the cartridge like 87 times. 
choked, you nearly got a hemorrhage and died. <laughs> and if that didn't work, you had to lick your fingers uh, and then run it down the cartridge and get all the dust off of it. <laughs> then if that didn't work, you did your secret move, which was everybody's secret move. You blew in the game, then you blew in the system, then you stuck the game like halfway into the system and slammed it down and hope it worked. <laughs> Yeah, that move was special to you. Um, nobody else thought of that. As I started to play it, uh, I didn't realize like how many of these old video games were influenced by drugs. Like even the simplest one that I can think of, like Pac-Man. Think about how high you would have to be to walk into an office and pitch that to somebody. Just be like, all right, man, listen. How about a game where you're in a circle? and you pop a lot of pills and get chased by ghosts. <laughs> What's the ending like? Ending? <laughs> that doesn't end. It just goes on and on and on. <laughs> hey, we're going to put munchies in the game, like pretzels and apples and crap. <laughs> Do they help you? Not at all. You just get them, they're just there. <laughs> My favorite video game, like I said just a second ago, was Super Mario Brothers. Well, whoever created that game is more high than anybody. You go a little bit in that game, you pick up a mushroom and you eat it and you get big. A little bit further and you pick up a flower and eat it and you can spit fire. A little bit further and you pick up a leaf and eat it and you can fly high. I'm oh, so high, up in the sky, and grow a raccoon tail. No wonder why that dude Mario collected so many coins. What expensive freaking habits. <laughs> You don't think the drug in the windows are in the game, even with those three? I'll give you one more. Think about what happened whenever you got that star. You sped up really quickly and you were invincible. I'd be meth people. Don't stare at me like you don't know what I'm talking about. Don't stare at me like all oh, y'all ain't got a messed up cousin. Um, <laughs> you don't believe there's meth? All right. I'll go one step further. The music changed whenever you got the star. Started off all calm and cool, like do 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 and then changed to do 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 Just to clarify what I just did right there, I jumped on a turtle. Said Mario was a plumber, right? Only pipe I guess ever worked on is a crack pipe. Are you serious? I, uh, I mean, it's not like, pot, pot has now become something that's like, it's eventually going to be legal everywhere, which is good, because I have a lot of pothead friends, and they won't shut up about it. Um, but I love them, because they'll get really high, and they'll come up with those ideas. You know what I'm talking about? Anybody, any potheads in here? Why are y'all standing there like, this is a stay operation? <laughs> Y'all yeah, standing there like, don't say nothing. That fat guy up there with the microphone's five oh shh. <laughs> no, he'll come up with the pothead ideas. And I love them. And he'll be like, all right, Thompson, listen. I want to get a parrot and an owl, and I want to stick them in the same cage. <laughs> Why do you want to do that, Jimmy? <laughs> Because that way I'm going to train them to do what? To go, who? Mike Jones. <laughs> I thought that was the end of it. But he just kept going. He goes, speaking of it, how do you think that Mike Jones came up with that brilliant song? I think he was ordering a pizza and had bad reception. He was like, let me get a large pepperoni. They said, who's it for? He said, Mike Jones. He said, who? He said, Mike Jones. Who? Mike Jones. Who? Mike Jones. <laughs> then he looked at his friend at the end of the couch and went, hey, Paul, well, that's a hit. <laughs> See, I love telling that joke where people know who Mike Jones is. Some of y'all get it, but some of y'all are looking at me like, I know Mike Jones, you went to my company picnic. I don't think that's funny at all. <laughs> He's a rapper, crackers. Um, 
Uh, you know, been fun. Uh, I do shows all over the place and uh, drive a lot. I was in the middle of the desert driving. I hate that. The only reason I hate it is because I start thinking of uh, Western movies, realize how full of crap they are. Like, there's no way that cowboys ever got attacked by Indians. It's flat nothingness. You can see them coming for 30 miles. <laughs> what did the Indians all do? All line up behind one cactus and be like, everybody don't move. <laughs> there's one uh, Indian that's always messing it up. He's like, smoke's a lot of peyote. Stop laughing. <laughs> and he goes, I can't. Do you see the size of that dude's hat? <laughs> Cowboys wear big hats. All right. Uh, <laughs> not, the, like, not like one of my jokes. It was coming. Uh, so it's cool. I uh, was doing a show the other night, and uh, there was some hecklers in the show. One dude was so drunk, he was insisting that I sing blue songs. Yeah, I thought that was kind of weird, taking the fact that I don't look like any blues artist that's ever existed ever. <laughs> I mean, and, and here's the thing, dude. I can't sing a blues song. I don't have strife. Which is something you kind of need to sing a blues song. Some disappointment, some heartbreak. What am I going to sing a blues song about? Oh, I put a glove on the other day. Found out I had a hangnail. It hurt. That's not sorrow. Oh, my car was icy. I had to scrape it off. I got my clothes wet and I had to change. No. <laughs> Not a song. I'm not BB Fats. I'm sorry. I just like saying BB Fats. I don't even know if that would be my name. That's cool. Good. I uh, was uh, reading the other day. I was reading the Bible. Uh, and I uh, got to the part where it says that Jesus Christ died for all of our sins. And that's cool. Which means we all get to go to heaven. Then I started to think about it. Does everybody get a free pass? Like, does even the bad guys get a free pass? Because that would be weird. I mean, it might be, might be cool. Like, heaven might be crowded for people. Maybe be roommates with some dude. Maybe you get a cool dude. Maybe you get, like, an artist. That'd be kind of cool, right? Be roommates with Vincent Van Gogh and stuff. Except there'd be some qualms. We'd walk into the house and be like, Vince, why are their ears all over the place? He goes, ladies love me. <laughs> That's not a history joke. I'm glad for you got it. Um, so he cut off his ear and gave it to a lady. That was called love back then. Now that's called stalking. And it's usually cat heads. Um, <laughs> but on the flip side, what if we get somebody bad? What if we get like a serial killer, like Jeffrey Dahmer? It'd be the same thing almost. We just go through the fridge being like, Jeff, why does this say ketchup, LOL? <laughs> why are their ears all over the place? Uh, all right. It's been a lot of fun. I'm about to get out of here pretty soon, but you're nice. Y'all laugh, and when y'all are done, you'll just, boom, ha, 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 Just cut it off immediately. I like it. Y'all honest, though. You Raiders fan? No, Good. Giants? How do you change, like, <laughs> that much? What do you go that far? Yeah. You want the same heartbreak? You want the same heartbreak in a different city? <laughs> The Giants are good now, though, kind of, sort of. They won a couple. Yeah. I don't know. I don't even know why I started talking to you. I'm just a huge football fan. Uh, <laughs> trying to record stuff, and I'm talking to you in the audience. It's ridiculous. All right. I'm about that to get out of here. Um, check me out uh, on Twitter. I'm JustinComedy1. I just want followers. Uh, yay! Thank you. Y'all can look at my Pinterest photos and stuff. It'll be fun. Uh, right, none of y'all wants to see my lemon crepes? Screw y'all, too. Uh, my lemon crepes are delicious. <laughs> no, I don't do that. But um, like I was saying, uh, I was reading the Bible, and I was reading the Bible because I go to church. Uh, but I'd like to state that if you have never been to a church that has a black deacon or a black minister, you need to go. Because it's really fun. Because they're really powerful and they're really soulful and they really get into the sermon. And they'll throw their own ideas in the middle of it and it's fun to watch. And be like, ladies and gentlemen, we're here today to speak of the word of God. May I get an amen? I said, can I get an amen, ladies and gentlemen? Um, okay. Um... <laughs> The congregation is silent. It is okay because my prayers will not fall on deaf ears. 
There's been lots of talk in the past couple of years about homosexuality being a sin. And I would like to read to you a verse in the Bible today. It says, it is not what goes into the mouth that defiles a man, but it is what comes out of the mouth that defiles a man. So if I had one piece of spiritual advice to all homosexuals, swallow. <laughs> Do not spill it for crumbs, you skeet, skeet, skeet. That is from the book Little John 316. My name's Justin Thompson. We have a lot of fun. Thank you very much. I'll put the mic down right here because I'm going to stay here.